The largest high-relief sculpture in the world, the Confederate Memorial Carving, depicts three Confederate heroes of the Civil War, President Jefferson Davis, Generals Robert E. Lee, and Stonewall Jackson. The entire carved surface measures three acres, larger than a football field and Mount Rushmore. The carving of the three men towers 400 feet above the ground, measures 90 by 190 feet, and is recessed 42 feet into the mountain. The deepest point of the carving is at General Lee's elbow, which is 12 feet into the mountain's surface. In 1912, the carving existed only in the imagination of Mrs. C. Helen Plain, seen here second from left. Miss Plain was a charter member of the United Daughters of the Confederacy. The Venable family, owners of the mountain, deeded the north face of the mountain to the United Daughters of the Confederacy in 1916. The United Daughters of the Confederacy was given 12 years to complete a sizable Civil War monument. Three sculptors worked on the carving during its creation. Gus Borglum was hired in 1915 as the carving consultant, and in 1916 he was appointed carving sculptor by the Stone Mountain Monumental Association. Borglum envisioned a carving with seven central figures accompanied by an army of thousands. He was not able to begin work on the carving until 1923 due to funding problems and World War I. After blasting away large portions of the mountain with dynamite, Borglum was able to complete the head of Lee on January 19, 1924. In 1925, a dispute arose between Borglum and the Managing Association. As a result of the conflict, Borglum left, taking all of his sketches and models with him. Borglum went on to carve the famous Mount Rushmore sculpture in South Dakota. Augustus Lukeman, the second sculptor, resumed work on the project in 1925. Lukeman's carving included the three central figures of the Confederacy on horseback. He removed Borglum's work from the mountain and diligently worked with pneumatic drills, but by 1928, the original deadline, only Lee's head was complete and funds were depleted. The Venable family reclaimed their property and the massive granite mountain remained untouched for 36 years. In 1958, the state of Georgia purchased the mountain and the surrounding land. The Georgia General Assembly created the Stone Mountain Memorial Association. In 1960, the Stone Mountain Confederate Memorial Advisory Committee was comprised of six internationally known figures in the world of art. A competition was held and nine world-renowned sculptors submitted designs for a new sculpture. In 1963, based upon recommendations by the Advisory Committee, the Stone Mountain Memorial Association chose Walker Kirkland Hancock of Gloucester, Massachusetts to complete the carving. Work resumed in 1964 and a new technique utilizing thermojet torches was used to carve away the granite. Chief Carver Roy Faulkner, a marine veteran with a talent for using the new thermojet torch, was able to remove tons of stone in one day. For over eight years, park guests could see and here the workmen and their jet torches. The figures were completed with the detail of a fine painting. Eyebrows, fingers, buckles, and even strands of hair were fine carved with a small thermojet torch. The carving is actually much larger than it appears from Stone Mountain Park's attractions. It's so large, in fact, that workers could easily stand on a horse's ear or inside a horse's mouth to escape sudden rain showers while they were carving it. A dedication ceremony for the Confederate Memorial Carving was held on May 9, 1970. Finishing touches were later added to the masterpiece 
and it was finally completed in 1972. Since the completion of the Confederate Memorial carving, it is cleaned about every 10 years by skilled climbers. The memorial received its first cleaning in the summer of 1985. The enormous granite horses, generals, and President Jefferson Davis were blasted with highly pressurized 150 degree water, which caused all the dirt, grime, and moss that had accumulated to fall away. The restorative cleaning work was carried out as part of a culture sponsoring project. The aim of the project was to remove lichen, algae, moss, and other organic stains that could damage the underlying rock by way of biocorrosion. The cleaning required a little more than three weeks to complete. Today, Stone Mountain Park is a combination of indoor and outside attractions, and the Confederate Memorial is at the heart of it all. The mountain's top attraction is called the Summit Skyride. This high-speed Swiss cable car provides a stunning view of the Confederate Memorial carving as it transports guests more than 825 feet above ground to the top of Stone Mountain. From the top, guests experience amazing views of the Atlanta skyline, the Appalachian Mountains, and more up to 60 miles away. During the summer, nightly laser shows paint a picture across the face of the mountain and right on top of the Confederate Memorial carving. At more than one million square feet, the steep north face of Stone Mountain is the world's largest projection screen. Lasers dance across the mountain and share stories, animate songs, and even tell the story of the Civil War. This brilliant spectacle has been drawing locals and visitors since 1983. With the Confederate Memorial carving as its cornerstone, Stone Mountain has a wide variety of events throughout the year. Most popular of these events is the Yellow Daisy Festival, an exhibition of world-class folk art. Other popular events include the Chili Cook-Off and the Scottish Highland Games. Whatever brings you to the park today, we hope you enjoy with your friends and family.